God bless you and good morning. And once again, I welcome you into the sanctuary of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, Amen. located at 3630 Platte Road in the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And on this blessed third Sunday of Advent, as we earnestly expect the coming of us Christmas Day, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank God for Jesus. And on this day, we thank God for you who have come to worship with us and pray that this, is, this worship experience has been a positive one for you. We're going to begin our service scripture reading. Paul's epistle to the church at Galatia, Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians 5 Galatians 5 and I'll begin reading at the 16th verse. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, translation of the Bible. And pray you'll be able to follow along with me no matter what translation you're looking at or reading from this morning. Galatians 5. Verse 16, and it reads, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. The Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nation to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit in every part of our lives. The Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. God bless you. Amen. The Lord's word is truly blessed.
Amen. Amen. Joy to the world. Yes. The Lord has come. Will you receive your King? Yes. We think about Christmas yeah. and what it all means. We're going to prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Uh, prayer commit requests have been submitted. We also have members of our church that are on our prayer list. Yes. Uh, that list that should be found on your church website. Uh, Mother Marzetta Moore uh, remains shut in as does also Sister Lodora Ligon, Brother Simon Hargrove, also uh, sick and shut in. Uh, we have requests. Matthew Parco is asking that God's protection uh, be over uh, their lot and property. Parco is also asking healing from asthma and protection for the family from COVID. Yes. Amen. Uh, Sister Vivian Ward is asking prayer for Irene Davis, yes. the loss of her daughter is hitting her very hard. Yes. Pray for Irene. Uh, Sister Ward is also asking prayer for Kendrick Jackson having a hard time just going through. Dr. Kendra, did I know? Yes. Oh, I haven't seen her in a long time. Let us go to the throne of grace. Our Father and our God, Lord, how we're so blessed and thankful to be in your presence on this Blessed third Sunday of the season of Advent. Advent uh, representing this time of expectation and waiting uh, for celebration of the birth of your one and only Son sent to this earth, Lord, to redeem uh, the fallen people that you love. We thank you, O oh God, for being our God. What a great God you are. Despite all that is going on around us, Lord, we realize we still can reach out to you because you still sit high and look low. Yes. You still have control over everything that happens yes. in this life and in our individual lives. And so we look to you, O oh God. Because you are a great God. Yes. You are a merciful God. Yes, you are a long suffering God. Yes. You're a God that is able to do anything but fail. Yes, and so we come to you on this blessed day, just like we are. We come as your children, Lord. We come as sinners saved by your grace. Yes. Even then, Lord, we've sinned and fallen short of your glory. And so we can only ask you to have mercy. Have mercy on our souls, oh God. We don't try to make excuses or, or rationalize our sinful nature or behavior. But, oh Lord, just have mercy. And then help us, Lord. Strengthen us. Put your word in our hearts, yes, yes, Lord. deep in our yes, hearts, Lord. so that we may never, never again yes, you, sin against you. In the name of Jesus, yes, oh God, help us today. Help us, Lord. Help us to appreciate all that you, you did over 2,000 years ago to send your only begotten Son. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That whosoever believed in him might be redeemed back to you. Yes. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, we think there are no other we thank you that there are no other qualifications. That we only need to believe. Yes, Lord. Thank in, the Lord. The Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You said thou if we would be saved. Bless us now, oh God. We have called many names out to you on today, Lord, and especially in this season of rejoicing and celebrating. Oh God, with something to celebrate. They say they got a vaccine for the COVID, and I guess they're celebrating that. But Lord, I'm celebrating the birth of your son. We thank you for Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because I don't care no vaccine yes. or vaccine or no vaccine. If it wasn't for Jesus in my life, oh, Lord, where would I be? And I think I'm not the only one that can say that today. So we thank you for all that they're doing. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, to eliminate this dreaded disease. But, oh, Lord, much more above that, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving in the scenes behind us, Lord, that we can't see, Lord, but you're working things out. Yes. All we have to do, Lord, is believe in you and be patient. Yes. And as the scripture just read, to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, and we'll be all right. Oh, yes. Bless all those names that have called off, Lord, those that are sick and shut in, those who are going through this morning, those who have lost loved ones. I pray for Sister Sandra Merck this morning. Oh, God, bless her. No mother expects to lose their child. Oh, Lord, right now, comfort and strengthen her and the rest of her family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, lift them up this morning. Let them know, Lord, that no matter how dark it seems, Lord, you are God of light, and you're able to lift up the head that's bowed down in sorrow. In the name of Jesus, bless, oh God, the Campbell family, Lord, bless the Hargrove family. Bless all those, Lord, who are going into this season, oh God, uh, having lost a loved one and will be missing that loved one for the first time. Oh Lord, feel that boy. Yes, Lord. Your presence. I don't know it's going to be all right. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to come to worship you once again. Thank you for those in this sanctuary who have come. Yes. Support of this worship experience. And we pray that what we do here, Lord, will be pleasing to you. Yes, Lord. Be honored to you. We'll glorify you. In the name of Jesus. We thank you now, thank Lord. You, Have Lord. your way in this service, Lord. Yes. Bless everyone here, Lord. Bless everyone who's watching, who's listening. In the name of Jesus, oh God, right now, let your word go out. Yes. Let it lift up somebody. Yes, Lord. Let it help somebody. Yes. Let it save somebody. Oh, yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, we thank you for thank hearing you, and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We've been coming to you the last two Sundays uh, with this theme or these themes of Advent. Um, we have defined Advent as that season of waiting and expectation for celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior. And also the expectation of his second coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I hope you know he's coming back. Oh, yes, he is. Amen. The question is, will we be ready when he comes back? But uh, so far we uh, explored the themes. Uh, there are four themes, uh, hope, peace, joy, and love, and the past two Sundays uh, the Lord has spoken to us uh, from the theme of hope and of peace. And of course, this Sunday, uh, it will be joy. And the scripture has been read, and uh, you can, if you 
you want to open your Bibles there, I will go back there, uh, pull out a couple of verses, Galatians 5. Um, there's a subject, uh, I just want to use this as we think about this theme. Uh, I still have Advent joy. I still have Advent joy. Back in the year uh, 2000, a television, I think it was VH1, uh, you know, y'all watch that, y'all watch the videos, poll, they polled uh, 700 music industry movers and shakers. And they concluded that the number one rock and roll song of all time was by the British band, the Rolling Stones. And the title of the song was, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Amen. Amen. Satisfaction uh, was indeed I Can't Get No Satisfaction was indeed the top rock and roll song of all time. And it occurred to me uh, that the popularity and longevity, longevity of that particular song can be attributed to a simple observation. That song speaks to the fundamental dilemma of so many people in our society who are in constant quest, in a constant quest for something that can bring them satisfaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you, yeah. you, you, the song has a reframe in the song that says, I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried, but I can't get no satisfaction. And, and you can almost see the history of uh, American life and culture written through the lens and lyrics of this song. I've tried and I've tried. I tried money yeah. and materialism. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I tried weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Well, well. I tried heroin, mm. cocaine, mm -hmm. but I can't get no satisfaction. satisfaction. Now, I've tried alcohol. Methamphetamine, mm. opiate, yes. and I still can't get no satisfaction. Mm. I, I, I've tried sex, mm -hmm. uh-oh, well, well. orgies, mm. Mm -hmm. strip clubs, well, well. hey man, yeah. but I can't get no, <laughs> that's all I can say. I, I, I've been to the casino, played the lottery, been married 50, 11 dozen times, but I can't get no satisfaction. And maybe the reason for the song has remained, uh, that song has remained so appealing to Americans is because the song speaks to the yearning and reaches deep into our psyche, into a frustration that burns within so many of us. I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried, but I can't get no satisfaction. 
most of us have gotten stuck trying to find satisfaction in one of three distinct ways. Uh, those three ways we keep trying in our vain attempts to find satisfaction are happiness, pleasure, and thrills. How strange that all three of these areas are referred to in one way or another by the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, verses 19 to 21, is being related to the works of the flesh or the acts of the sinful nature. Y'all going to roll come with on, me, don't turn on, me off. On. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, Paul says the results are very clear. Mm -hmm. Sexual immorality, yeah. impurity, yeah. lustful pleasure, yeah. idolatry, mm -hmm. sorcery, and hostility, and quarreling, fussing. Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, wild COVID parties, Ooh. and other sins like these. And so he says, he, he says, let me tell you again. As I've told you before, that anybody living this kind of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Drunkenness, debauchery, discord, and dissension. We can refer to the same impulses of the human spirit by different names, but the motivation and the desired outcome are the same. We're trying to find satisfaction for ourselves. Some of us are obsessed with this quest for happiness. Mm. Won't be happy. Mm. Mm. We, we want to find that time and place in life uh, where there will, uh, where we we will always have a smile yeah. on our face yeah. and no no tears in our eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Won't be happy. Mm -hmm. Who even more than that? We want somebody else to make us happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We go through life living in a fantasy. In a fantasy world all the time, and we forget that a fantasy world is nothing more than a great illusion. Because Jesus tells us in no uncertain terms, in this life, you're going to have tribulation. In this life, there are going to be days when you're not going to be smiling. It's just life. And in our hearts, we, we really know that this is true. Amen. But we still behave like the lyrics of that song. I, I tried and I tried. <laughs> and I tried, but I, I can't get no happiness. I, I've moved. I've lived over here. I've gotten away from these folk. I, I got around some other folk. But it's still, I've I tried and I've tried. But I can't find no, I, I've got a little money now. I've worked 40 years. I've got two, three cars. House. But I can't get no, can't find no happiness. Because happiness, all of us know, does not and cannot last. 
So in our frustration, when we discover that happiness does not last, we try something else. Right. <laughs> that next thing might be thrills. There's an obsession in this country with thrills. That's why we buy cars that can be driven faster than any highway in America would allow us to drive. This is why we jump out of airplanes, free fall from thousands of feet in the atmosphere. Why some folk go bungee jumping, go plunging down the steep and twisting hills of roller coasters. We want that rush. That adrenaline rush. We want that sensation of living dangerously. We want what some people call the rush that comes when we live close to the edge of death itself. Rich folk now buying seats on the space shuttle. Not because they care or know anything about science or space research, they do it because they're attempting to buy uh, for themselves the ultimate thrill. For other folk, the thrill is linked to the allure and excitement of gambling. Gambling one kind of, or another. And whatever the thrill of gambling might be, we shouldn't lose sight of the sorrow that it can produce. How many folk have lost their rent or mortgage money as they get caught up in the thrill of the next roll of the dice or the next pull of the lever? Amen. Thinking it might bring them a big payday. I mean, Negroes go into the casinos knowing that the house always wins. Always, yeah. always. Yet they are willing to risk their paycheck on a game of chance. Mm -hmm. It's not a rational decision. It's the mark of a society that it has embraced the thrill as a way to approach how they live their lives. But just like happiness, people soon discover that thrills cannot satisfy because they cannot be made to last. Yeah, they come and go yeah, yeah. with equal sadness. Right. Mm. That's why my man B.B. <laughs> King, he, he made that famous song. Didn't yeah. he say it? Yeah. The thrill is gone. Mm. The thrill is gone away. Yes. Ain't that what B.B. said? Yes, he did. Amen. <laughs> so what happens to the thrill seeker when the thrill is gone? Like the song said, like B.B. said, they just try something else. Again. There are many in our society whose lives are driven by this pursuit of satisfaction, and they try one thing after another, trying to attain that goal. For many of us, the quest for satisfaction leads down the path of pleasure. Uh, let me be clear about this. You want to get the kids out the room. <laughs> pleasure. Don't, don't get it twisted. I, I, I'm talking about sensual things. I'm talking about the fact that pornography in the form of videos, movies, television programs, magazines, websites, these sensual stimuli, uh, some uh, read some places that all this stuff grosses more revenue than the money uh, folks spend on 
all professional sports combined. I'm talking about our national fascination with sex. And the fact that too many people are preoccupied with the cheap, fleeting, loveless encounters that are so much a mark of our present culture. Yeah. That's why you got all these commercials for Viagra, Levitra, Cialis. Hey, Amen. Yeah. <coughs> because for some people, it's all about pleasure. Yes. Amen. I'm talking about young and old. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Even old folks. Amen. Mm. Amen. Walk around here, I ought to be trying to Get, get your life right with God. Right. You, you looking, you uh, can't get nothing up no more but your eyelids. <laughs> all right, all right. <coughs> Pleasure, sex. Ooh. Never mind the fact that this country is overrun with teenage pregnancy yeah. and unwanted births. And a staggering use of abortion as a means of birth control. Mm -hmm. One solid marriages that are destabilized by extramarital affairs. Yeah. There's a high price to be paid for our fascination with the pursuit of pleasure. And our society is paying that price right now. This too is what the Rolling Stones are talking about when they said, I tried. I tried, I tried. Man, I, I had so many women, I can't count them. But I still can't get no <laughs> satisfaction. We, we tried the pursuit of happiness, thrills, and pleasure. But it seems like something is always missing. Amen. Amen. Millionaires, billionaires committing suicide. Folk that we look and we think that they, they got it all. But they're unhappy. Amen. A lot of folks search for satisfaction, attempting to combine all three, happiness, thrills, and pleasure. And they, that's what they do when they turn to drugs, legal and illegal. Mm. No, any, anything, I know I did, anything that can, that can help them get high. I, I, I remember one time, I was in drug rehab, and they told me to write down Every drug I done used, just to get high, everything. Legal, man, I got to 940-something. My hand was shaking so bad, I, because now it was before me. I did all this? For what? I was trying and trying and trying. But I couldn't get no. Satisfaction. That's why y'all out there who hitting that pipe, you keep hitting it. Because it seems like you just can't get it. So you, 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 you sit up all night hitting it, but it just couldn't get no satisfaction. Amen. We, in this country, we take more prescription drugs than any other nation on this earth. And that might simply could be a sign of an advanced medical system. But good medicine does not explain why we're also the world's largest consumer of illegal drugs. Right. Or the fact that one out of every six Americans is an alcoholic. Mm. Here's the truth about all of our pursuits uh, for satisfaction, be it in the form of happiness, thrills, or various pleasures. At best, all these things can do is bring a little bit of peace for a short period of time. There's a reason none of this stuff 
nothing can bring us any lasting satisfaction. It is because all of these things that fuel our futile pursuit of satisfaction are things that work from the outside in. All of these things are behaviors or experiences that must be drawn from the world around us and then brought into our lives. And so then, as a result, whenever the world around us shifts or changes in even the most trivial way, we are made to realize over and over again that satisfaction that sense of being complete, a yeah. uh, uh, contentment, once again has eluded us. Mm. The works of the flesh or the acts of the sinful nature are forever unsatisfying. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it feels good for a minute. Mm. It's unsatisfying because in order for any of them to work, uh, there's something outside, outside, uh, or our lives that must occur. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, that's not the case. All right. With the fruits of the Spirit, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. as you find in the 22nd and 23rd verse, mm -hmm. love, joy, yes. peace, yes. patience, kindness, goodness, mm -hmm. and self-control. Satisfaction can be found in the fruits of the Spirit. Because these qualities work from the inside out. These are the spiritual formation issues that take root inside the followers of Jesus Christ. That sustain us even when the conditions around us are being turned upside down. Mm -hmm. So in this season of Advent, uh -huh. uh, let me make the case that I would rather have the joy of the Lord right. than the satisfaction of the world yes. any day of the Amen. week. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Amen. You don't hear me. Let, and let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. uh, first, joy yes. comes as a result of the faith and trust that resides within me yeah. mm. and not in relation to the material or sensual things going on all around me. Our church, it's important that we talk about joy versus happiness mm -hmm. and pleasure uh, during the Advent and Christmas season because it's so easy for even as us as Christians, to get caught up yeah. in shopping, gift giving, mm -hmm. materialistic yeah. uh, observance of Christmas, yeah. to the point that we, uh, we, we easily forget uh, the glad tidings of great joy yeah. spoken to the shepherds of Bethlehem by the angels of heaven. Uh, we forget that that was about the birth of a Savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not about what gifts, what toys you're going to buy your kids. Amen. It wasn't about Black Friday or, or, or at Walmart or the luxury items on sale on Amazon. Mm -hmm. The joy of Christmas, Advent joy, yeah. is about the love of God yeah. who sent a Savior yeah. into our world. To redeem us from the behaviors that constantly pull us away from God. After all, the song says, joy to the world. Yes. The Lord has come. It don't say Santa Claus has come or Rudolph the Reindeer has come. <laughs> the joy of Christmas is centered in the fact that the Savior has come. God is with us. Well, well. Emmanuel. Yes. Our joy. Uh, not our satisfaction, but our joy. Yes. Is anchored in that knowledge. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I may not receive, I may not get any of the material gifts that so many people want to point to as the center of Christmas. But when I receive the Christ of Christmas, I can find the joy that will forever elude those who are searching for satisfaction. Oh, uh, and then the joy of the Lord uh, is available to us, even though none of us are deserving of God's love. Amen. 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 The gift of the Spirit that God offers, love, joy, peace, and all the others are not reserved for those who have proven themselves deserving of God's attention. They are freely given and freely received signs of God's amazing grace. Yeah. Uh, from a theological point of view, it's important to remember that God does not wait until we become the people he would like for us to be before he acts on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God loves us. Yes, yes. And Christ died for us mm -hmm. while we were yet sinful yes. and rebellious. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. Yes. The wonder and miracle of Christmas is that while we were yet sinners, is that salvation was made available to anybody deeply entrenched in the works of the flesh yeah. or the acts of the sinful nature. That is the knowledge that brings me to an unspeakable joy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. An Advent joy. Yeah. This Advent joy. Right. Amen. Amen. And the third thing I want to say and the last thing, I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. I want to say about joy it's something I learned in a very profound way. And I learned it last year. A year ago, September, I laid in a hospital bed in Orlando, Florida. My entire body was rabbit with a terrible infection. I had IVs in my arm. And I had an IV going straight to my heart because the infection had got into my heart. I laid in that bed. Those IVs, pain all in my body. My wife talking in whispers outside the door to the doctors. Church, I knew I was sick. I was so sick I could barely pray. diagnosis for me was so shocking and so unsettling that I began to ask God if this was it. Jesus. However, in just a few days, Hallelujah. thank God, yes. in just a few days, yes. I discovered that the Lord was not through with me yet. Come on now. Hallelujah! I began to heal. Yes. And thank God I, I was spent exactly one whole month uh -huh. between Orlando and Ann Arbor in a hospital bed to the point where I couldn't even stand up. Jesus. Look at me now. <laughs> I'm still not 100%. But I look back on that experience and the instant hardship and stress that it seemed to place on myself and my wife. And yet through it all, we still have joy. Oh, I'm talking about Advent joy. Hallelujah. It reminds me of that old gospel song after all that I've been through. After all the sickness, after all the pain, after all the surgeries, after all that I've been through, I still have joy. Hallelujah.
which are also listed among the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. There's another song I learned to sing in the church as I close. It says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. And as I think about it, I, I, I think about our children standing right here and singing, they got the joy, 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 joy <laughs> down in their soul. Down in their soul. Amen. This joy, this advent joy yes. that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Yes. This is what separates joy from satisfaction and, and the cheap thrills that you're looking for out there. The fleeting happiness the temporal pleasure, uh, all that stuff associated with, with what the world is, has got for you. Only Advent Joy can say, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Do you have it today? As you prepare in this Advent season, do you have joy? It's available. It's available. It's all about that little baby boy. Born on the south side of Bethlehem, down the hood of Bethlehem. Jesus. Do you have the joy? Do you have that Jesus joy? He's available. He's available. Will you believe today? Will you take him into your heart? Yes. The fruits of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. That's what you want to wake up with on mm -hmm. December 25th. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what's in the box under the tree. Right. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Some folk ain't got a tree. Let's know in a box. Mm. Amen. But they got joy. Yes. The Advent joy. Yes. Because this joy cannot be taken from them. God bless you today. Amen. God bless your hearts. Amen. Thank God for the joy of Advent. Thank God for Jesus' joy. Amen. Amen. Amen.
life This Advent season We await celebration of the birth of Jesus If you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior You feel the move of the Holy Spirit When you this day This third Sunday of December or This third Sunday of Advent Sorry. Won't you believe? Won't you accept him right now? He's inviting you. Christ wants to save you. Wherever you are, wherever you are watching me or listening to me, it's all you have to do. Just feel the call of the Lord on your life and drop to your knees. And repent of your sins. It's God to forgive you. And then confess him as Lord and Savior in your life. Yeah. Believe that he is truly the Son of God who came, yes, he is. died on an old rugged cross, yes, paid the price for your sins and my sins. Yeah. was raised on the third day now sits at the right hand of God advocating for all of us who believe. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank God for you and pray God's word has touched somebody and helped somebody. Amen. He said it would and we believe that it has. God bless you now. As we move closer to this Christmas season also dealing with COVID for the first time, COVID and Christmas. Yes. Amen. Amen. I just want to remind you to keep yourself safe. COVID is on the loose, yes. running rampant. People all around us are getting sick. Amen. Now it's, it seems becoming more relevant to people as it's hitting home for many of us. Amen. Friends and relatives not only being sick as I've had testimonies of people dying, losing loved ones uh, to COVID. So let's take care of ourselves. And you can fuss and fight about the vaccine, who's going to get it, whether you're going to get it. I'm, no, I'm not going to get in that fight. I can just tell you I'm going to get it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 As soon as they bring it, I'm going to get it. want to wait and watch and see what happened to me, then you'll have your opportunity. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I will get it. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Pray for one another. Remember those on our prayer list, uh, especially one lift up, Sister Sandra Merck, uh, her daughter Janae and their family uh, lost her daughter Joy. Went home to be with the Lord. Pray for George's son, John Paul. That's his name. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for all those who joined us here in the sanctuary. Amen. Sister Ward, Deacon Williams, our musicians, Brother CJ and Brother Michael, to keep us going. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday for Bible study. Bible study, we're going to have some information for you. So I hope you all tune in uh, our Christmas service, watch night service, and the lights, what we're going to be doing in this COVID-19 environment. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's look to the Lord in the benediction. Lord, we thank you now uh, for your presence and Pray that all that has been done and said here has been to your glory. It's been pleasing in your sight. Bless us now, Lord, as we go from the sanctuary, those who are here, those who are watching. Lord, bless them all. Keep us all in this Advent season, Lord. Let us let our minds uh, be stayed on, on you yes, Lord. and on the true meaning yes. of Christmas. Now as we go from this place, may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
fellowship, communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us, henceforth, now, and forever. Let us all say, wherever we are, Amen. Amen.